Hello and welcome to Hero Geek Presents, where we talk all things heroic. Um, today I am here with Anna Main, and we are talking about his uh, comic book called Bond of the Blade. Now, this is something that I'm really excited about. I've been friends with Anna Main for quite a while on Twitter, and we've been talking a lot. Um, I'm part of his Patreon. I dig this idea so much, and I just, I just love it. I'm really excited about it. So, uh, how's it going, Anime? Hey, man, what's up? I'm good. You know, thanks for having me on the show. By the way, I really appreciate you uh, reaching out to me about this. Oh no, no problem. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while now, and like, yeah, you know, the other day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this again. Um, I, I think it's a really cool idea. So just feature creators <laughs> and um, the show is going to be basically um, about my love of her- heroism and heroic characters in, in entertainment media. So that's like the main focus. And from what I know, Bond of the Blade, um, a lot of my favorite characters from, from Bond of the Blade are really, really heroic characters. You know, you have, <laughs> you have um, uh, Ashira, which is like, what you told me about Ashira, I was like, oh my God, I love her so much. And then you also have uh, Mickey <laughs> yeah. Makila, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yep. and one of my other favorites is, is Midas. I just love his look. <laughs> he just looks so cool. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Bond of the Blade? Okay. It's a shonen inspired comic book that revolves around some high school teenagers who are empowered by this, uh, we'll call her an, an angelic spirit. Uh, her name is Ashira, which a hero geek just said here. And they live in this city called Union City. And essentially, they've been good friends for years. And they all have their reasons for kind of keeping their head down. You know, if you remember back to when you were a teenager, you probably weren't the most heroic or altruistic person. Doesn't mean you were a dick, but you were kind of doing your own thing. Yeah. And it used to be like this really bustling almost metropolis type of city. But under recent years, this new mega gang called the Zealots has risen up and they've just been put in the chokehold on on Union City and it's just been going to shit. And uh, the main character, uh, Terry, as well as his uh, two uh, best friends, uh, Michaela and Will, they're like, you know what, they, they've been living there their whole lives and they, they hate seeing their city like this, but you know, they're like, what can we do? You know, we're just some teenagers and I did put a few things in there from uh, anime and like, I guess, Power Rangers type things where Mm -hmm. they're inexplicably powerful for their age and um, (laughs) and experience level. They're essentially, they're all black belts because they've been getting extensive martial arts training from uh, Terry's grandparents, uh, Emmett and Regina, who were old crime fighters back in the day, who also were empowered by Ashira. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, just, you know, they're growing up in this rough city, need to defend bullies and, you know, drug dealers and shit. So they taught them all martial arts. So they're all like black belts walking around, but they're really not thinking beyond that. You know, they're like, we can defend ourselves. And if someone's like right next to us, we can jump in, but they're not thinking, oh, I'm going to go out here and like start punching gangbangers in the face, you know? Yeah. But, um, story stuff happens and eventually they all come to the realization that no, they, they can't just keep their heads down they have to do something to make the city better or it's just going to crumble to the ground. Mm -hmm. And upon learning this, Terry's grandfather gives him this family heirloom in the form of the sword. And Terry's looking at like, they got guns. I'm not going to go out there and start chopping at them, you know? Yeah. (laughs) But um, what he doesn't know is in that sword is the spirit of Ashira, Ashira the Winding Flame, who is this this celestial warrior. She's kind of like a mix of, I'd say, Wonder Woman and Storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Okoye, Okoye from the Dora Milaje, from the Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you put them in a blender um, and some of, some of my other little weirdness, um, you would get Ashira. <laughs> gotcha. Where she's, yeah, she she's one of definitely one of the favorite characters I've ever created. She's just this pure energy of like ultimate love, uh, that motivates someone to protect. If you know anything about classic mythology, she's a warrior in the sense of like Athena, 
mm-hmm. instead of like Ares. So she's really not a bloodlust, bathe in the blood of our enemies type person. Yeah. She's yeah. more of a, you know, she's a strategist protector type. And no, she she definitely gets down. You mm-hmm. know, she can she can throw hands and blades and all types of stuff with the best <laughs> of them. But her motivation is not. I want to cause people harm. It's I want to protect those who can't protect themselves. She is the type of person who she'll take on a whole army by herself just to uh, save people because she's like, I can take it. Mm -hmm. I I, I can weather the storm. But there are people out there who can't do anything. So I would rather jump into the fray and just take on everyone myself. And she had her own crew uh, back in the day. Yeah, which which uh, Midas was, was yeah Midas was a part yeah, of yeah, which that's where Midas comes in, uh-huh. <laughs> and I, yeah. I love Midas because he was when we was talking about um, my inspirations. One of my inspirations that I think a lot of people don't know is different mythologies from around the world, mm-hmm. and um, for Midas, I pulled a lot of from uh, Middle Eastern and Egyptian deities and myths, which is why he had he's the only one with the lion head. Mm-hmm even though he is a quote unquote angel, like the rest of them. Yeah. Something happened back in the day that made him like that. You'll find out at some point. Oh, awesome. Um, (laughs) Yeah. But, but he's, he was part of the crew and he's, he's like a huge, what's the best way I can describe him. I described him one day on Twitter as um, being aggressively supportive. Yeah. I I understand. Yeah. I have a character (laughs) similar to that um, for a Paragon prime. Um, called Cyber Knight. He's kind of like this yeah. larger than life kind of jovial kind of character. Mm-hmm. He's definitely come. Let us drink and regale each other with tales of heroism. Yeah, you think yeah. lift a mountain? No, I will move the moon. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I love I love those kind of characters, and I think I'm really gonna love Midas when I get to, when I get to experience a story with him in whatever shape it, it comes in. You know. I love everything I'm hearing, especially the part about Ashira having this heroic, selfless, protective kind of thing. Um, that's something yeah. that, you know, this show is about that. It's about, you know, focusing on that. It's about, what's the word I'm searching for? Uh, spotlighting these kind of characters mm-hmm. and these kind of stories, you know? And that's yeah. why I just responded to everything you've told me, everything I know about, about uh, Bond of the Blade. Um, so I'm guessing that that spirit of, of protection that Ashira has kind of finds its way into Terry. So mm-hmm. she motivates Terry into doing something, um, into being a hero, into into doing something, you know, to protect um, his city, right? Uh, definitely, because she has a lot in common with Terry, even though he would never think so on the surface. Mm-hmm. Um, because after Terry talks to his grandfather and, uh, to her about why he wants to do what he ends up doing, she, you know, sees him and she's like, you know, he is just this boy and he wants to do so much, but he doesn't feel like he has it within him to do it. So I need to be what to him, what I was to his mother, his grandfather, and even his grand great grandfather, Mm -hmm. you know, he's actually the fourth in his family to do this. Um, gotcha. yeah, and yeah. so she ends up becoming sort of a, even though a, his, his grandparents were his physical trainers, she becomes his spiritual trainer yeah. and teaches him how to harness um, what's called his aura. Cause you know, most Eastern stories have some type of internal energy, whether you call it ki, chi, chakra, uh, in this it's aura. So mm-hmm. they're, they're, he, she's teaching him how to harness his aura in a way that he can get out here and start making a difference in the world in a hands-on way. And, you know, since he is an 18-year-old high schooler, you know, he can't do but so much. Yeah. So, you know, she, she kind of has this ability to, when she bonds with a person, um, whether it's in uh, the, the Gallon family, that's Terry's last name, mm-hmm. whether it's in the Gallon family or someone that uh, is closely related to them, they are able to use some of her powers in some way. Gotcha, so gotcha. Yeah. she lends Terry the ability to manifest some of her powers and he begins to learn more about who he is and what he can do because that's another aspect of a uh, bond of the blade is people learning how to uh, stand up for themselves and, and stand mm-hmm. up for something greater than them. In fact, the word, if you just took the word stand, that is so 
crucial to the story. People learning how to stand up for themselves, for other people, for each other, for what they believe, that's for awesome. their community. Yeah. You know, that's that's a I'd say if there were one core theme, there there are a couple, but that's probably the most core theme of Bond of the Blade is people learning how to stand. And so much of Terry's story when we first meet him, I don't want to spoil too much, but we can kind of see that he has the potential to be so much greater than he is, but for story reasons, he never really applies himself. Mm -hmm. He really has a very passive go with the flow type of mentality. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to just do whatever I need to, to, yeah. to get through. And then it's on to the next. Thing. And I'm, I'm guessing there's a moment where he stops being passive and he does something about it. And I'm guessing Ashira has something to do with that moment. Uh, yes, there are actually uh, a couple moments uh like that there's definitely um we we can call one an inciting incident there's mm -hmm. one where he's like super bare bones like really not doing more than the bare minimum and then there's the inciting incident that kind of lights the spark in him so he, that starts him that gets him moving on the right track and then after that a little bit after he's already bonded with started bonding with Ashira, there's another one where he really starts to come into his own. And yeah. uh, the same could be applied to the other two heretics, uh, Michaela and Will. They all have their own individual motivations for why they want to uh, essentially go be ur urban ninja superheroes. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a little Ninja Turtles um, mm -hmm. kind of influence, you know, urban heroic yeah. ninjas kind of like feel yeah so uh yeah speaking of which tell us about tell about tell us about the other characters tell us about Michaela which is another one of my favorite characters by the way <laughs> yes yes um one thing I definitely wanted to do that I think some properties kind of neglect is when you have an ensemble cast of course you're gonna have your your main person mm -hmm. but all of the the cast needs to be fleshed out all of the team like you can't just have uh, Cap and Iron Man and then the rest of them. Mm -hmm. It's not Superman, Batman, and then the rest of Justice League. No, they're all their own individual characters. Yeah. And I made sure, and I'm constantly making sure that my characters have that same care. They could each have their own spinoff comic if he wants to do that. Easily. Well, we, we could start with uh, Michaela because uh, I'm crazy about her. She is she is a damn delight. She is a joy to write for. She's a joy to have drawn. Because for those of y'all who don't know, I can barely draw a stick figure. <laughs> That's why I'm commissioning all this shit to be done, okay? Don't worry about that. It is fine. But Michaela is an interesting case because she's... A lot of people might look at there and think she's a contradiction. First of all, she is... I guess you could say she's the the heart of the group in a lot of ways. Yeah. She's she's the one who takes stuff. Terry takes stuff seriously, but he takes things seriously on himself. He reminds me a lot, actually, of Robin from the Teen Titans cartoon. That's a good one. Yeah. You, you made a very good connection right there. He's yeah. very much like Robin <laughs> in that regard. Yeah. Um, Mickey is more... She cares, definitely, and she takes things seriously, but sometimes she's necessary to remind the others, especially Terry, of the bigger picture. Because Terry, one of Terry's flaws is if he thinks that he's responsible for something going wrong, he's going to put it on himself to fix it, but he may pursue it in a way that really won't get anything done, mm -hmm. which is why they need to work together as a team. Uh, in fact, if you remember one of the very first panels from the Bond of the Blade mm -hmm. uh, mini arc, which is out right now on Tapas, is Terry's um, in this warehouse. He's trying to save this hostage and he's got these goons surrounding him. And um, he's about to engage. And Shira is talking to him, you know, uh, through the spirit. And she's telling him, you know, hold on, you know, backups on the way. But he's like, no, I have to do this. I, if I don't start doing this right now, we're never going to get the, another chance. You know, she, he's yeah. like almost unwilling to trust that other people will be able to do what needs to be done. Yeah. So he, he will throw himself into harm's way. He takes it all on himself. Yeah, he definitely yeah. does. He puts it all on. Himself. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting. I'm you know. I'm getting a lot of Leonardo, Robin from Teen Titans mm -hmm. vibe. You know, from what mm -hmm. you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. That he's definitely that. Um, so Mickey, in a lot of ways, is the one who kind of needs to remind him that you know, yes, it, it's good to take things on, but you have to remember that we are a part of a team, and you know, we're going to work together to work towards our goals. You know, 
I also like her because, okay, for just a half tad a second, I'm going to get a little personal here, if you don't Mm -hmm. mind. I was a Christian for, I'd say, the first 21 years of my life. I deconverted in college. It wasn't really a super dramatic thing. I just came to the conclusion that I just, this just doesn't gel with me anymore. And so for most of my adult life, I have been non-religious, but I still think fondly back to a lot of the things that I experienced when I was a Christian. I even remember some scriptures, you know, and I Mm -hmm. still use them as motivation in life. And looking at the way a lot of things are done now, people are so critical of Christianity specifically in a way that they may not be critical of folks of other religions. And I don't think that's fair. That's stupid. That's head ass. And actually you claim folks do to Muslims all the time. Now you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And this is an element of the character that I responded to quickly as, as I am Mm -hmm. currently a Christian, I'm a believer in God and Jesus. So for Anna Main, who I know um, is an atheist, for to for him to be able to create a, a genuine character that is a positive representation of Christianity, and I just like wow, that is really really great that you were able to get into that headspace despite the fact mm-hmm. that you don't have those beliefs, and I really appreciate that as a Christian character, as a Christian myself, you know, and I everything I know about this character, everything that you've told me about this character is great i mean he just put up a a a video on on twitter today about uh, uh, michaela praying and this is really beautiful prayer that actually got me a little emotional like that's so amazing i love that about the character i love how she's just so joyful and Mm -hmm. just positive (laughs) yeah she she's definitely the the I wouldn't necessarily say bubbly all the time, but she's definitely more of the one of the the most positive, upbeat one of the uh, of the trio. Part of that is just her natural personality. Mm-hmm. Part of that is the environment she was raised in, because I mean, I have as a kid who was raised in the church, I have very clear memories of stuff like vacation Bible school and singing Kirk Franklin songs at Sunday and all that stuff. And that energy I wanted to put into her. And I guess one of her struggles is she's trying to um, live in a way that she feels would honor God. But the way that's been like sort of laid out to her from like some family members and church folks where she feels like she's compromising who she is. And when she does anything that's actually of herself, she ends up getting shunned, pushed away. You know, that's not godly. Hey, you watching Harry Potter, you're going to go to hell. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I know like how that. that is. I know how that yeah. is. Yeah, I remember when I was in uh, middle school at a, at a, at a private um, Christian school, I brought a science fiction novel to read during recess someone saw me Mm -hmm. reading the sci-fi novel and it was taken from me and taken, I was taken to the principal's office and, you know, like, Oh, you can't read this demonic stuff here. I'm like, damn. Yeah. It was, Mm. so I could never bring comic books to, to school or anything like that. It was so stupid, (laughs) but uh, yeah, Michaela is, is adorable. Oh, I just, (laughs) I just, she's adorable. like, that's the word. She's adorable. Like I love her. A good chunk of that adorability, I have no idea if that's a real word, but it is now, <laughs> but a large chunk of that, uh, I have to shout out her her, her voice actor, uh, yes. Shakira Shields. She's a, a friend of mine who I've known uh, back from college, and I was looking for people. I'm like, who could really capture this energy? And I originally, I initially thought, I got to hit up Shakira. So I hit her up, and she was more than happy to jump on board. Um she captures uh, Michaela's energy like super, super well. And she also sings, which Michaela also does. So I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, let's put great. you on this project, you know? Yeah, uh, she's, she's yeah. a great character and I'm looking forward to reading about her. Now, why don't you tell us about a character that I don't know a lot about, which is the other um, member of the Heretics. Tell um, me about Will. All right, uh, Will, a.k.a. Vice. Oh, I, I, I suppose at some point I should share their superhero names since technically they have them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I usually call them just by their given name since so, that's how most people know so, them, but they actually do have code names. Okay, so Terry is, what's his code name? 
Shen. Shen. Okay. And Michaela's yeah. code name is Chant. Chant. And uh, mm-hmm. this 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 character's um, what's his Will, name? Will. Yeah. His, Will. his name is his uh, his code name is Vice. Vice. Okay. Um. Yeah, he honestly is probably the most challenging for me to write, Mm -hmm. which is why there's not a humongous amount of stuff out there about him yet, because Mm -hmm. I'm still refining some of it. But essentially, he is a mixture of like, if you knew popular kids in school who were not like the asshole popular kids, but like the cool popular kids who are kind of just, they could be a ladies man if they really wanted to. And you can look at them and tell they got like an edge about them. Like I, you know, he walking around all flashy and whatnot, but like, if you try him, he will like, you know, he will like fuck you up. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind of will. And his, his big thing is he is a, a character who deals very deeply in duality. Because you have on the surface, you know, he's like the smiley, uh, cocky kind of jokester of the group. You know, he's the one always making wise cracks. And uh, one great way I can display his character is just by relating him to how he interacts with the other two heretics. Will is the one who one of them is always trying to keep him in check because he has a super smart mouth. He kind of has that personality of, oh man, you know I'm just fucking with you, man. That's how you know I that's how you know I love you. If I don't fuck with you, you know I don't love you. So he's a wise person. ass. He's, yeah, he's a wise yeah, ass. Yeah, exactly. He's the wise ass. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you sounds like a, like a great but, character. Yeah. But under that surface, he's dealing with a lot of guilt and shame because of things that he's done in his past and that's his big one of his big motivations for becoming a heretic is because he's looking at the zealots and they're out here causing all this mayhem and um, without spoiling too much he even has a family member who's a high-ranking zealot on one Mm -hmm. hand he's like yo they're they're fucking the city up Mm -hmm. but at the same time he's like okay, I won't in a gang, but I've done some shit that I ain't proud of that's, yeah. that is reflecting badly on the city too. So, you know, he's carrying a lot with him and that actually bleeds into his superhero persona when he's Vice, which is why his um his costume has the the, the, the black and the white on yeah, it. Yeah, I did notice that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. he, he, as a, a nod to the movie Do the Right Thing, I put love on one arm and hate on the other, like Radio uh, Yeah, that's really up. cool. I love, I love the... The style you went with with their their gear, their costumes, or whatever you want to call it, it's this yeah. very cool urban. Yeah, ur- and again, the word urban ninja comes to mind. Mm-hmm. It's just this really, I, I really love that. Um, now, I do want to talk about one of the most interesting characters, which is Terry's girlfriend, Foxy <laughs> Foxy Phoenix. Uh-huh. Yes, Foxy Phoenix. Foxy Phoenix. And- Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Foxy Phoenix is kind of flirt, and she's flirted with my <laughs> character Paragon Prime on Twitter a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but she is so much fun, so much fun. Talk about yeah, talk she, about she, Foxy she, Phoenix a little bit. <laughs> she's kind of in the same realm of Midas in that I can't talk about her too much because she doesn't come up in these first couple chapters like we it's okay to know who she is but i really can't go too deep into her backstory yet okay okay Um, but i can say that she she is one of my favorite characters to write like across all stories i'd say if you were to say uh anime what are your three top characters that you love writing for foxy is easily one of them yeah she is so much fun and she is uh like like hero geek just alluded to she's a big time Flirt almost in the realm of like uh, uh 90s She-Hulk. or what was what's my man name uh uh the guy who wrote She Hulk yeah, yeah. In, the good one in the 90s yeah I know She Hulk like, like in we, that we, type where you yeah know, we she- yeah we've spoken before I know She Hulk is a huge influence on the character so and she uh you know she's she's very she's fun I I, I would call her a uh, a sexy magical girl with a slight edge mm-hmm. um. To some extent, she can almost be a gag character sometimes. Like, not to the realm of, like, Looney Tunes, but, like, say uh, Harley Quinn when she's written well, mm-hmm. where but, she can have yeah. that that, almost, that silly, almost, like, this is who we're fighting type of thing. But really, she's, like, a complete beast. Yeah, like the Harley Quinn from Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, yeah there you go. All right. Um, she's one of those characters where she's coming later, 
but I almost wish it was later now uh-huh. because I want to write her stuff. Now. Oh, trust me. I, I know, I know how you feel. I have so many characters for Paragon Prime that I want to like introduce now, but now it's not the time. Like I got like so many mm-hmm. villains and so many other yep. characters. I'm like, ah, there's too much, you know? <laughs> oh, right. Right. Um, do talk about your villain. Cause she is okay. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so, my, so every every hero is defined by their villain, their nemesis, and for the heretics, and in particular for Terry, that is this this spicy little number by the name of Mamba, mm-hmm. and Mamba actually is in the similar vein of the heretics in her aesthetic, where she has that urban ninja thing going on. But she leans, she mixes the um, the aesthetic of the urban ninja with also like a revolutionary mm-hmm. because what she is, is she's the leader of the zealots. And the best way I can describe her is she's the character of Carly Morgenthau if that character was actually written more competently, where she is a very driven leader, where she's using her platform as a gang leader to bring about the world of change that she wants to bring about Mm -hmm. because she is in not in a completely different boat than the heretics but she's abandoned the idea of making the world better through altruistic or heroic means Mm -hmm. she feels like that is a uh you know i'd say it's a lost cause so she sort of adopts this new code and almost a new code of the streets and under her the um the gang that she is in charge of starts branching out and like like an amoeba just eating up all the other little gangs in the area mm-hmm. until they become this this conglomerate mega gang called the zealots and that's why they call themselves zealots because li- like a religious zealot they're following this new code and they're following mamba um into what she believes and what many of them believe will be a better future uh, it just so happens that they're doing so in the most ass way possible, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and she ends up uh, forming a sort of cat and mouse game with the heretics where she sees them and she sees what they're doing. And she's used to like almost having no resi- almost no resistance mm-hmm. because uh, the zealots sort of have this advantage over other gangs and even law enforcement. There's this, super steroid drug they take called demon juice that okay. gives them uh enhanced strength and durability uh on par with what the heretics have if not stronger depending on the person the situation and um as they take this there's really no one in the city who can be a threat to them it's to the point where the cops either um end up being crooked and like joining them or not like joining them, but like being on their side, or they just don't even show up. Like if someone calls and says, hey, there's some zealous shit going on uh, on 15th Street, they just won't go. Because mm, wow. they're like, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to get hacked to pieces. I'm going yeah. to unload a clip into this dude's chest, and he's going to still be running at me. Uh-uh. Got it. Got you know? it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you sound like you have great concept, an amazing cast of characters, really strong, strong characters, you know, and strong story. Yeah, and you you even have like uh, the grandparents. I'm I'm really psyched about the. I I'm gonna be honest with you. I kind of have a crush uh-huh. on Terry's grandmother from back when she was in the seventies. She's like mm-hmm. kind of hot. Like what? Um, yeah, I'm sure you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my own thing, and it's it's weird because as many um, homages as I'm paying in Bond of the Blade, Terry's grandparents were also. Um, crime fighters uh his grandfather emmett and his grandmother regina uh they used to go by the code names uh hammer and pearl or the hammer and they had their own they started like their own legit movement uh called the united angels Mm -hmm. uh which is why uh regina has the tattoo of the halo and the wings on her stomach um and they're like my nod to black exploitation heroes y'all know shaft uh, mm-hmm. Coffee and all them, uh, Foxy Brown, all that shit. Yeah. Um, and they're big time. They were big names back in the the late sixties to the early eighties. That's when they're. Um, that's when they were running the streets and keeping the streets safe. Yeah. And they were also empowered by Ashira. And their story honestly is rich enough 
for me or, to if yeah. I wanted to give them a spinoff, I could. It would be well no... from from what I know. You have three possible spinoffs with this. You have the main Bond of the Blade. You have mm-hmm. anything dealing with Ashira, like a prequel comic with Ashira yeah. back when she was leading. Mm-hmm. What was the team that she lead? The the, the team of a uh, of um, Angel that she led. Uh, back then they were called the OD Doro. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you know, her along with Maya's and the other members, you know, you could, that could be its own separate comic. And then you have everything with the grandparents and that could be its own separate comic. So (laughs) those are the three main spin, like, you know, Barn the Blade universe kind of comics that you could have. Yeah. Actually, I mean, you, you say that. But I like I am literally going to make the prequel for Ashira because there's so much between mm-hmm. her and her own nemesis and her team and everything happening back then. That's its own thing that it'll definitely be touched on in the main series. But to be fully fleshed out, it's going to need its own yeah thing. So yeah. that's definitely and, going to happen. And any, anything that gives me more Ashira, I'm like totally on board with. So. <laughs> You know. Don't blame you. And also, big shout out to um to Ashira's voice actress, uh, another friend of mine, mine by the name of uh, Meredith Johnson. Yeah. Who I yeah. also I know from college. Who she's just she actually is a a, a trained classically uh, trained actress. Who she's she's been doing a damn thing in the theater circuit for for years now. Um, nice. So definitely, if you see the name Meredith Johnson on any Broadway productions or anything, y'all go know check it that out. That is the voice of Ashira. Y'all need to go check that shit out yeah. for real. You so, know, but yeah. yeah, what that's one of you know one of the elements that I like about the way the anime um, advertises is that you I know mean, something that I'm going to do with Paragon Prime myself is this kind of multimedia kind of approach to promoting his comic. He does these videos with this voice acting and music and if you want to check any of these out go and subscribe to his patreon because he has some really really cool stuff on there he works really hard on this stuff and i think it needs to be seen it's really great stuff and it essentially it just fleshes out the the universe of bond of the blade you know um and i love all the stuff that i've seen like it's just really really solid stuff and i, I love it i love it yeah i appreciate it man because um my i guess my I, there, there are two motivating reasons why I do those. The first one is I can't draw. I say this all the time. I'm I'm not lying to y'all. If you see a well-done stick figure from me, it probably won't from me because I can't <laughs> draw. But I can write and I can video edit and I have a huge library, internal library of music that I know I can pull from. I know people who make music and I can have them do original pieces for me. I know people who can voice act. I voice act myself. So why not? I just thought, why not put all of my talents and skills to use to promote this awesome art and this awesome story? Yeah. Because yeah, I I feel like it would be a disservice to me, the characters and the people if all it was was art, as sick as the art is, like there's there's just too much in my head mm-hmm. for me to not do this, and that's the other reason. Like, I'm such a music head. I'm a huge music nerd. I'm a huge film nerd. I'm a huge uh, voice acting nerd. I love all type. I love all this stuff. I'm just an art person, man. Mm-hmm. And as much of Bond of the Blade is my nod to everything that's mattered to me. I can't not put some of this other stuff in there too. That yeah, that's exactly I, I how, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I'm I, I have a musical element to to Paragon Prime. I, I go on the hunt for like composers, and I have like, oh, could you write? I want original, you know, uh, character themes. I even kind of want to have the comic have an actual soundtrack. Like, I kind of want to make that happen. You know, I mean, um, you should. Yeah, I'm going. I'm probably going to like. Yeah, you know, the comic is going to come with the soundtrack. You can download MP3s of online or somewhere. You know, that's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. But uh, but yeah, I yeah, me me and anime has spoken a lot about you know musical themes for characters. I I sent him one just today um, for the grandparent characters that I yeah. think fit perfectly <laughs> for yeah for the feel of those characters. You know. And, um, and I love how you um you definitely knew what type the the the, the motif 
yeah. to sort of pull from you. Yeah, you yeah. definitely hit the spot on that one. Yeah. No, on, on one last note before we go, um, speaking of the fact that you can't draw, tell us about your incredible artist. All right, man. We got to talk about my boy, Goichi Monji. G-O-I-C-H-I-M-O-N-J-I. Go Ichi Monji. Right. And he is just incredible. The fact that he and I are so in sync creatively, it really is a godsend. Um, I was just back earlier this year, I was looking for folks to just do some some commissions of some of my characters just for fun. Cause I'd had a couple done. I'm like, I want a couple more, but I want a different style. And I don't know why, but a picture of adult Gohan flying on the uh, flying Nimbus Mm -hmm. just passed on my timeline. I'm like, yo, this is sick. Like this almost looks like official DBZ art. I looked through some of the other stuff he posted and I talked to him, I hit him up and, you know, he had some really reasonable prices and his turnaround time. Like I can't stress this enough. The fact that that man, I gave him two, I gave him concepts for, uh, characters from a, another story that I'm writing. And mind you, these sto- these characters have never been drawn before today. He had that shit done in that afternoon. And oh, yeah. I, I'm kind of... high quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I, there's so much great artwork uh, on the Blade, and you, you just constantly keep coming out with more and more and more. Every day, I go on Twitter <laughs> or I go on your Patreon. I'm like, oh my god, there's more art. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The thing, the weird thing is, um, I, once I knew that I wanted him to be my official artist, I kind of went into overdrive with, um, experimentational and promo art. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what you're seeing has, has been done like months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm just releasing it in a way that's sort of strategic, Uh, you know? But every now and then I am struck with the idea like, yo, can you do this real quick? Like, are you mm-hmm. doing anything later on today? Can you, do you think you can do this right now? Like the one for uh, Michaela praying, mm-hmm. that was partially a birthday gift for Shakira because I'm like, no, you do such great work. You know, it is you. I also thought that, you know, this could work really well as some promo work. And then most recently I did Terry and I did everyone in his family who also had uh, has been empowered by Ishira. So his mom, his grandparents, and his great grandfather. Mm. Uh, those were done very yeah. recently. But pretty much everything else you're seeing, most of that has been done for weeks, if not months. Wow. All right. Well, um, this has been awesome, man. I am really excited yeah. for you know for for this for to read more, to find out more, to just consume it all. Yes, um, consume. Consume. Yeah, <laughs> check check out his Patreon. The link mm-hmm. um, is going to be in the description of this video. So I'm going to I'm going to have all the links, all the links to the Patreon, to his Twitter, to like mm-hmm. even even um, the first couple of chapters of his comic book. I'm going to have the link to that, so you can check yep. all of that out. Um, yeah, I mean he's telling stories about heroes, and the, I'm all about that. All about that um yes, so anything else to add before we go um i do have one thing i do want to say before before we go um which i haven't really touched on yet um part of the reason why i'm doing this especially so hard is because as a uh, a black american man i've been in this space where i love a lot of stuff and i want i do like when i see black people in things i'm not gonna lie and say that mm-hmm. i don't but I want them to be well done characters. Yeah. I want them to have the same treatment that you would give a white character. Mm-hmm. So in a lot of uh, pros and um, established names in various entertainment industries, when they make these cookie cutter or bland characters, or they're just blatant ripoffs or palette swaps, race mm-hmm. swaps, oh, yeah. and they say, oh, this is for you. And it's the same generic bland ass shit that we've been getting for the past decade and they're like oh you don't like this you're racist white people you don't like this black people oh you you must hate your own race and i'm like you know what man i'm tired of this being the same song and dance i'm gonna have to go out here and if i want some bomb ass fully fleshed out black characters i'm gonna have to do this shit myself not (laughs) saying that no one else is doing it at all but i know my characters i know their stories i can do representation in a way that is the same care that Peter Parker got from Stan Lee, that 
you know, all these different characters got from the greats of the past. Yeah. I don't want to just slap a black coat of paint on an yeah, existing I, I white hero I know. I, and where we just, we just, oh, well, we're just going to ride the name. No, yeah. I want you to get to know my characters. I want you to love them, not just because they're a black version of X, Y, Z. I want you to love them because they entertain you or motivate you yeah. or help you forget what type, whatever shitty situation you're in. I want you to love yeah. the story they're going through, their changes. I, That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to evoke the the great name of Dwayne McDuffie because he did yes. exactly what you're doing. You know, yes. I read Icon and I love that. I haven't read the static comic, but I am watching the cartoon and I love Virgil Hawkins. He's an amazing yes. character. He's really likable, really unique, and I just I just want more of that, you know? Yes. Yes, most definitely. That's what we should be getting. And it's uh, it's honestly, it's insulting to me as a lifelong nerd and as a black person when people say shit like, oh, uh, no one's going to pay attention if we don't do it this way. No one's going to pay attention to our to these black characters if we don't just co-opt the name of a white big name superhero. Yeah. So what you're saying is original characters like Static, or Vixen, or Cyborg, mm -hmm. they can't stand on their own because they don't have 80 years worth of fame behind them, which ironically leads to them gathering more dust because people keep running with this lie that no one's going to care about them. So they, they keep not writing them. And I just think I'm just tired of that shit. Yeah. I just, yeah. just straight up, I'm fucking tired of it. I'm like, no, you're, you, if you're going to complete, if you're going to keep ignoring the awesome black characters that you already have, that is very unfortunate. And I think that sucks, but I have to do my own. I can't just keep waiting for people to either make an, a new original black character and give them that care or for them to shed a spotlight on the ones that exist. Because nine times out of 10, when they do that anyway, it ends up like newbie a real one. Like mm. Nubia is a great, Nubia could be a great character, but yeah. if the only time people touch her is to tell a blackity black story about far left politics and how it sucks being a black person, no yeah. one's ever going to want to read their books. No, no, no. And you know, I, I, we need more people like you. And I think, I think, you know, the great uh, Eric D. July is throwing his head in the ring, which is awesome. Yep. Yep, definitely shout out I'm to Eric July. I'm really excited about about what he's gonna come up with because I've been watching him for like three years now. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's gonna <laughs> be great too. But I think you're you're the trailblazer on on this. Um as, hey, as, man. as, as this I'm, kind of creator. I'm gonna say I appreciate it, man. But I'm gonna say, like I say on my YouTube all the time, I'm just a simple nerd making sense of this crazy ass world we live in. And one of the best ways I can do that is by telling the type of stories that I wanted to see more as a kid and yeah. that I wish we were getting more of now, which is genuinely good, sincerely told stories that just happen to feature a lot of black people. The story doesn't just exist because they're black. They're stories that feature black people. Yeah, exactly. There's a difference. And I've, I've seen both kinds of stories before and I, you know, so mm -hmm. I know the difference. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, well, this has been great. Um, everybody, uh, tune in to the next episode of Hero Geek Presents, where we're going to be talking about more heroes and talking That's right, man. all things hero. All right. right. Well, uh, all later. Bye-bye. Right, right, talk to you later. Deuces. Bye. Bye.